Okay. Uh, I will switch my floor from chair to present. Thank you for your kind introduction. Hi, my friends in Asian Bioethics Association and the Bangladesh Bioethics Society. I'm Paul Chun from Gangnam Wonju National University in Korea. Today, I'm going to talk on the physical babies and bioethics and regulation of the human germline genome technique. From the late 1980s, scientists have identified and uh, characterized the parts of the DNA structure that were later given the name CRISPR. Clustered regularly into space, short palindromic lipids. You can see uh, first. Yeah, five uh, segments are uh, repeated calendar of the sequence and the SR spacers arising from the past exposure to foreign the DNA such as virus. So the spacers act like a, a fingerprint of a criminal and uh, if you find the uh, next uh, fingerprint of the criminal in criminal scene then you can arrest them easily and uh, these are called physical associated genes playing a role in immunity to infections. Scientists have worked out that certain protein can be used to monitor procedures to sneak the DNA at precise locations. This new technique allows the scientists to edit the genome by removing, replacing, or adding to part of the DNA sequence. It consists of two key molecules that introduce a mutation in the DNA. One is an enzyme called Cas9 that snips out the double-stranded DNA string at the desired site. Another is a piece of a RNA, a similar type of a structure to DNA that is used as a set template in natural processes within cells such as repairing DNA. A pre-designed guide RNA string creates an inner layer bind to the target DNA acting as a guide so that Cas9 is delivered to the exact location it is needed. It has many advantages over conventional genetic engineering and other gene editing tools. This allows scientists to cut out parts of the genetic material while leaving the rest untouched. They can also add in new sections of the DNA taken from another organism. The gene editing technique, GFN, TALEN, and the most recently CRISPR has been invented and uh, used successfully in mammals and uh, human cells in recent years. Once the dis discussion on human genetic engineering among scientists and the scholars dates back to the mid-1960s and the early 1980s. This discussion gained a sudden momentum in the mid to the late 1990s with the expanding use of IVF for human reproduction and the birth of Dali, the clone ship. And
by the spring of 2015, these discussions for overdrive in response to research that scientists in China has been doing CRISPR genome editing research using early stage human embryos. Finally, in uh, last November, Ho Zhang Pui announced that he helped to give us to gene edited babies, so called CRISPR babies. As Brandon Ford comments, the fears and the hope of genetically engineering the human race has been haunting the modern mind for the better part of the century, although only in the last decades have techniques been developed that might give us the power to modify the genomes of human beings at the embryonic stage. This is Ho Zhang Pui, perhaps most notorious scientist these days. News that this guy has created the world first gene edited babies, so called CRISPR babies, came shortly before the start of the second international summit on human genome editing, where he was originally scheduled to present his work on mice and monkeys. During summit presentation, Ho presented the results of pre-criminal gene editing studies in mice and monkeys, then summarized the clinical work. He had injected CRISPR-Cas9 with a guide RNA targeting HIV receptor CCL5 onto embryos. He assessed the extent of editing using pre-implantation guide genetic diagnosis implanted those embryos into the mother and then monitored the pregnancy through birth. He then sequenced DNA from their placenta, umbilical cord, and cord blood to assess on and off target mutations. This could be a significant advance in genetic science, but there was some very serious problem with this experiment. In sum, the actual editing of CRISPR wasn't executed well, and the research integrity was significantly jeopardized. When Ho Jang Hui told the world of the first CRISPR babies, he defended his research by explaining that in China, people with HIV or AIDS experience considerable stigma and discrimination. But there was no compelling reason or a make these to use genome writing genome editing of CCL5. The choice of gene editing the CCL5 gene was depressing. The law of CCL5 in the brain is poorly understood, and it will not be simple to test the consequences of the mutations made or either HIV resistance or central nervous system function. <laughs> He tried to mimic CCL5 delta study to variant protective organism HIV, but the mutation that Ho made are not delta study to. They have never been seen before. Variants in human gene pool of very unknown significance. His prediction that these individuals with inhibit HIV uptake has hasn't been verified, though he assumed that any CCR5 mutation confer a protective benefit against HIV viruses. Furthermore, new mutations must incur new risks. He could have assessed the safety and the efficacy using animal models, but he did not. As a result, Lulu and Nana, the name of the two babies, uh, uh, living human babies became new experiment subjects. The procedure so inappropriate 
so as the result for it is held that potentially if we use a physicist by training poorly designed the whole ethical procedure. There were problems with the informed consent and the proposal review process. He acted in contravention of global consensus. And he even acted in contravention of his own stated ethical views. The research has not been published in a peer review journal, so we cannot be sure of the exact details of what has been done. Instead, the scientists made a claim to the newspapers and the videos. The scientific community has widely condemned our first experiment to initiate the pregnancy using genetically modified embryos. The application of genetic modification technology on human embryos poses fundamental moral questions. Instead of sparkling debate, the innovation of ethics has played a central role in persuading the public and policymakers that scientists are able, responsible for see and manage the whole uh, social implications of emerging technologies on behalf of the public good. Key decision about when and how it will be appropriate to make inhalable changes to human beings currently lie in the hands of the scientists. Although ethics are repeatedly invoked, the most prominent condemnation of a first section doesn't actually address whether it's ethical to tinker with the human rights through gene editing. Reaction to has announcement revealed instead anxiety on the part of the scientific community about the major regulation that would make it more difficult to do genetic genome editing research, not to mention damage to the public's trust in genome editing. Scientists articulated more concern about maintaining their authority to unilaterally transport human biology than a willingness to have a public debate about the ethics of the weather and under what conditions such transformation should take place. Scientists are in the position of imposing of their own values and judgment about when and why to genetically engineer humans. These values address only frontiers of science. In this case, current CRISPR ethics operate in a very narrow mode of scientific enablement, shrinking responsibility for the human future they seek to alter. The concept of dangerous knowledge refers to knowledge that accumulates more rapidly than the wisdom required to use it. CRISPR is a good example of the concept of dangerous knowledge. The rapid development of scientific knowledge and the immediate implementation of new technic technologies made it difficult to reflect on. Paradoxically, the advantage of CRISPR became dangerous factors. The advent of bioethics through the democratization of these techniques raised the problem of bioethics, biosafety, and bioterrorism. Isabel Stengers and Francois Bellis recently advocated a slow science over the first science. Slow science was pretty much the only science conceivable for hundreds of years. Today, it is a revival and needs a perfection. Society should give scientists the time they need, but more importantly, scientists must take their time. In 20 then the Slow Science Academy in Berlin published the Slow Science Manifesto. From this perspective, slow science can use, usefully be interpreted as a call for social justice in its demand for time enough to ask and answer the questions on means of science and its end. Though it is difficult to slow down science 
advance in this highly competitive academic industrial environment, it is an imperative for maintaining sovereignty on human common genetic heritage. Basically, there are two stages for human germline gene editing. Moratorium and uh, more strict regulation. To get more insight for the regulation of human generalizing editing, let's follow a concept called the Gartner height cycle. Initially, there is a technology breakthrough. There is a lot of hope about potential benefits. At this point, the benefits are usually overstated and the obstacles are not considered. After this initial peak of enthusiasm, we started to learn this technology has its own disadvantage. Meanwhile, we learned that there are some genuine use of the CRISPR technology. My thinking is that with CRISPR, we are around this point of high expectations. It's definitely a technological breakthrough, but there are lots of things we don't know. For example, the elephant in the room is that even though we know how to edit genes, we don't fully understand the human genome in the first place. My prediction for CRISPR is that we will move from the point of high expectation to a point where we realize that there are real obstacles to its use. And slowly we will learn where CRISPR works best and where it doesn't. In the long term, I can definitely see gene editing be used for a certain set of diseases. As for editing CRISPR babies, we need to know a lot more about our DNA before we get close to that one, not to mention all the ethical issues. This graph shows it's necessary that we should not make faster regulation at the peak of exaggerated expectations. We are apt to amplify benefits and neglect risk at this point, and it makes it difficult getting more reliable risk of risk result of risk benefit analysis. Consequently, we need more slow regulations as well as slow science and the slow ethics. This is the book I wrote last July on Peace for Babies. Unfortunately, it is written in Korean language. It's the first book on first gene edited babies ever. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any question, please? get an accident. Who has the responsibility? The engineer who, did, 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 who designed the car or the engineer who produced the car or the engineer who uh, designed the roads or no. who has the responsibility? Uh, uh, we know that if a, a driver, a, 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 a human driver, gets an accident, we know that uh, most of the uh, 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 responsibility uh, belongs to him or her. But what if it is 
and autonomous wheels. It is a bit, maybe a legal question. Yes, I, 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 Cases because I believe that babies will be programmed to kill people in those situations. They will be programmed to, for example, if they uh, will have issues between uh, one people and five people, they will they will choose the, the, the one uh, unfortunate uh, person and will will kill, kill him or her. So in that case, I think that no one would be morally responsible. When it comes to law, I don't know how in Bangladesh or but in my country we distinguish between subjective uh, and objective liability. And again, subjectively, subjectively no one would be responsible. Objectively, uh, there will be responsibility for the damage caused by the, by the accident and it will be covered by some uh, insurance company. Thank you. Yes, I wonder. This mic. There's just one question about the CRISPR babies and the revolution of human germline editing. In India, in certain hospitals, I have come to know that when a woman becomes pregnant in 12 weeks' time, they try to change the germline, they try to change the gene to some extent and they try to make the child uh, so beautiful as a uh, European. Do you think that it is correct? Because I could see the child. I saw the child when the child was born. So, do you mean to say that they are changing the genes or the germline? Can they do that? They are doing it. In India? Really? But germline and genes, they are being changed after 12 weeks of pregnancy. No, no. Uh, it is uh, banned in India. It is banned in India. Germline editing is banned in India. But they are doing it. At uh, least the, uh, the, the genetic traits uh, is selected via uh, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis. There is no uh, country's permit germline gene editing. And uh, yeah, it's a kind of a uh, germline gene modification name called uh, mitochondrial displacement techniques were permitted in England. But in uh, India, there, there's no germline gene edited babies. So, yeah. And uh, in recently in Russia, a uh, scientist named Lavrikov are trying to make uh, gene edited babies, but he is under the regulation of uh, Russian government, so he cannot make it. Thank you, sir. Uh, the time constraint, we uh, can allow uh, more questions. Now uh, it's going to be concluded, and so. Uh, I would like to request uh, to brief uh, uh, brief comment over this session uh, to the chair of this session, Manjay Kim. Well, because we are already one hour behind, so I don't want to go in specifically, but this session is really fantastic. And thanks, really, thank you for two papers. This is about the future, and uh, even though the title of the session is written as uh, ethics, but can we consider the future? Sometimes it's really promising on one hand, but very scary on the other hand. So I think uh, these two different uh, 
things clearly show. We can see these two opposite things by uh, listening to you know, two papers you know, today. So through you know, CRISPR, we'll be, we may you know, cure the severely ill babies you know, even before born, but uh, for auto autonomous vehicle, I may consider to buy one in your future, but you know, well, we cannot, but the problem is we don't know the facts exactly at this moment, and then, so it was really right our time to consider ethical problems you know, beforehand, and uh, I'm expecting more papers like this in the next conference. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Uh, the